Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. To all of you online, welcome. We're glad that you're here watching with us this morning. My watch is reminding me that it is 10 o'clock and time to get going. So <laughs> here we are. Yesterday we had a great day uh, with Orange Track Racing. Um, so we were just thankful to all of those that uh, came and showed up for that with us. Uh, coming up, we've got a few things. We've got a little bit of a break here, but come March 4th, we'll be having our next men's breakfast right here at 9 o'clock. And you can kind of see a little hint, just right here, <laughs> of what's going to be on the menu. So uh, definitely will be eggs, definitely pancakes. I haven't heard anything about bacon yet, but you never know. That could happen. So we're looking, we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to a, a time, great time of fellowship with the men here at uh, Grace Street Church, as well as uh, some folks, that, uh, gentlemen that have been coming uh, alongside us and uh, fellowshipping with us. But coming up a little, almost a little too quickly, in two weeks, well, a week and a half now, we'll be starting Lent with our Ash Wednesday service. And following up with after that, we will be doing our Lenten series in the footsteps of the Savior. Uh, this is another series that Max Licato has done. Uh, it's about a 20 minute video followed by discussion. And he actually did all of the videos and all of the talking teachings in the videos in Israel. So he literally not just is it about being in the footsteps of the Savior, it is literally in the footsteps of the Savior. So we're looking forward to that as that leads up to Easter. I cannot believe that we are just yeah. about eight, eight weeks yeah. from Easter. Mm -hmm. it seems like we just wrapped up Christmas and uh, wow, what a way to celebrate God. Um, Grace Street Cinema will be returning in March uh, Mark and I were discussing licensing for a couple of different movies this morning, and we have a, shot an email off to a, one of the companies, so looking to hear back from them to see what that next movie will be. Hopefully next Sunday when we put the slide up here, it'll have the name of the movie on it, and we'll have that date set for you. Uh, Iron Sharpens Iron is coming up very quickly, shortly after that, April 1st. Um, sign up is in the back. Uh, for those of you that are present that want to go, if you're watching online and you'd like to go, go out to Orange, or to Orange, I'm still stuck on yesterday, go to gracestreet.church, and uh, on that home page, if you scroll down, you'll see this exact same picture, and there's a, a learn more button, or a register button, click on that, it'll take you to a page where you can register uh, for, with us to go to that, so I uh, look forward to having you do that. Outside of that, um, the uh, worship playlist will be showing and the link in the feed on our Facebook Live this morning. So after we conclude our online portion, you guys can that are watching online can see the songs that we will be singing today. And it, uh, I have a, had a preview of that. It is an amazing worship set, so uh, please do watch those. Mark, did I forget anything? Um, oh, well, no, I talked about that. March 11th. You talked about it. Yeah. Oh, yesterday. Okay. This is from, this actually is from November. And, oh, there's no snow on the ground. Look at that. Um, but this is about what it looked like yesterday. We had a, a great group of folks here yesterday. Um, yesterday, I was, we finished. Sometimes I just sit at the computer afterwards and I'll piddle a little bit and work on the website or what have you, and two gentlemen uh, popped in and had seen the ad in Tidbits and wanted to know more. And so we showed them a little bit of the Facebook Live up on the screen. Love this screen, because you know, it gives that life size. So they got to see what the raceway looked like. As uh, It's orange track racing, but according to our announcer, <laughs> Wade, it is Gray Street Raceway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they got to see that, showed them the track and talked to them a little bit and then they were very, very touched by the ministry and couldn't say enough about what they thought of, of just a little bit we talked about and then uh, one of them gave us a donation to the ministry so 
that was a that was just a huge uh, stamp saying yes I hear you God thank you so uh, we were blessed yesterday by that well, the sun is shining again today more of that snow and ice that we got the other day is melting um, I am very thankful that the Lord gave us this space here and the reason for that is it's a great space but if you look outside we have a south facing window which means our parking melts first <laughs> so I do love that at home I have a north facing driveway which have to manually keep clean so this is very much appreciated the way that God takes care of us well this morning pastor Mark has a message for us on life's journey and are you where you want to be and are you where you need to be are the two questions uh, that he is going to be answering today and our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 139 and uh, it's from the message version so hear the word of the Lord he says oh yes you shaped me first inside then out you formed me in my mother's womb I thank you high God you're breathtaking body and soul I am marvelously made I worship in adoration what a creation you know me inside and out you know every bone in my body you know exactly how I was made bit by bit how I was sculpted from nothing into something like an open book you watched me grow from conception to birth all the stages of my life were spread out before you the days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day wow. this psalm is a prayer it is a prayer of a person who calls on God announcing that he is ultimately innocent of all charges because of God and he's meditating on all the things God has done God knew us before we were born and he knows us now even when we don't even turn to him when we just say no you don't exist I have been encouraged so much since Wednesday because of a group of young college students who have been packing 24 hours a day the chapel at Asbury University in Kentucky it has been a worship service just constant worship their big classes were canceled on Thursday and again on Friday there is a revival happening in this university and I would love to see this explode out into the rest there's a movie coming out called Jesus Revolution which is about a different uh, one but that came from the West Coast believe it or not and came this way revival is coming and it's because they are worshiping in adoration at God's creation God's character goes into each one remember that no matter how you're feeling you may be feeling beat down worn out sounds like a song <laughs> you may even feel worthless but here's the good news and I know Mark's going to be extrapolating on all this momentarily but here's the good news God is ready willing and able to work in you and through you by the power of the Holy Spirit we just need to Father God, as we prepare to hear this message that you've given to Pastor Mark, we just thank you. We thank you for the day that you've given, Father. We thank you for the lives that you've given to us. We thank you for the people around us. We thank you for this ministry, this church, and all that we do here. We ask that you would continue to grow us spiritually and that you would also grow us by number, Father, so that we could experience the kind of revival that is happening. Father, we thank you. We give all praise, honor, and glory to you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. 
Pastor Terry. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody up and alive and ready to go today? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That speaks to me every time I get up to give a message. Because I know that in my soul, God has put me into this position to help bring life into his word. And that's really, truly what our jobs as pastors are, is to help bring that life, give us a relevant uh, relation to his word that we can take with us out into the world that's attacking us all the time. And uh, so yesterday at Orange Track Racing, I'm, I'm kind of going to backtrack a little bit, but I did a devotion yesterday, as we always do, and it was, what am I worth to God? And so I talked about the SS uh, Garris Papa is the name of the ship. And it set sail for, from West Africa to Liverpool, England, back in 1941, during World War II. And it had a huge, huge load of silver on it. And sadly, that boat was bombed by a German U-boat and sunk into the ocean, where it stayed until 2012. And a company called Odyssey Marine found it and recovered, or if you're ready for this, nearly 100 tons of silver, worth about $30 billion today in today's money. See, that large last treasure was worth a great deal to the company and to the government, obviously. And they spent a lot of time and money and resources trying to find that treasure because that treasure meant so much to them. But what I asked the question yesterday to, to everyone at Orange Track is, did you know that you are worth more to God than all of that silver, than that $30 billion worth of silver? You're worth more to God than any of that treasure. Jeremiah 1.5 says, God chose you before you were formed. God know, knew he wanted you before you even breathed your first breath of air. You don't have to earn your worth with God. You were chosen, loved, and valued by God before you even knew him. Now isn't that awesome? We really need to take these messages to heart, and, and one of the things that I posted up on the internet this week was, you know, uh, we always take for granted, and, and we take everything as, as being uh, completely valid, those things that are posted up on the internet, right? So we, we tend to believe those things, or we believe a lot of them in there. But how come we don't take that same value and place it upon the Word of God? I mean, truly, He guides and directs our entire lives. Now, some people guide and direct their entire lives by what's written on the internet. But they tend to stumble through life. And so the question comes out, you know, because this is life's journey. Are you where you need to be in life? Are you going down the right path? Are you doing what God wants you to do to get to where he wants you to be? Those are some pretty deep questions. So then the one that follows up with that, are you where you want to be in life? Are you ready for this? Where you are in life is a result of the decisions that you made, the choices that you made in life. Got you where you are today. So I ask you again, are you where you need to be or where you want to be? So today we're going to talk about the facts of life. Okay, no, no, not the 70s TV show, but real life. A path that can lead to eternal life if you make the right choices along the way. So when we think about our journey in life, it's important to look for all the facts before we make that choice, that all important choice. And life is nothing more than a series of choices that we make. So we gotta look at all the facts. We need to make sure that we are making an informed decision. So if we think back in our sermon series from last year, we talked all about making good decisions and through what we learned in that, good choices make for good lives. And that's absolutely true. Today, we're going to look into what lies ahead on your journey and the consequences for each choice. 
I'm going to start off in John 14, 1 and 4, and it says, and this really is truly uh, in the Bible, it says, this is the way to the Father, a journey of life. That's exactly how it was written in my Bible, my study Bible. Jesus said, your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if not, I would have told you. Now I am going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. You know the way to where I am going. Now, how many times have we heard this throughout our lives in church? You know, did it make sense to you? I use this exact verse every time I do a funeral service for someone. Because life is a journey. And if we put our trust and our faith in Christ, and if we believe in the written word of God as being truth and fact, it can indeed get us to that place. If I go away and play, prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself. That's a promise that we should hold on to. That is a truth. That is a fact that he will come back and bring us into his presence. So that where I am, you may be also. He wants us to be there with him. So we need to trust him. We need to stand on that promise. We need to stand on that truth. You know the way to where I am going. And that's all written out in his word. We have the road map. You know, I travel a lot. I'm heading to Atlanta tomorrow. And so what I do is I program the whole thing into my GPS. And I let the GPS guide me to where I need to go. So we have a GPS. Carry it. Yours is sitting there right down in the chair. God positioning system. Okay, that's the Bible. So it's the God position. He says, that's our GPS to get us to where we need to go. It's all in writing. It's written down. Very explicit set of instructions on how to get there. And if you don't follow it, where you're going to end up. And it may not be where you want to be. Well, in that translation in John, it comes from the Greek. And it uses a firm, uh, form of the verb menios, or traveler. So in there, John is saying, hey, we're all travelers in life. It's used this way 40 times in the book of John. And it's used this way to remind us that we are all on a journey. And for believers in Christ, he gives us a promise, a reassurance of what is at the end of our journey. And that we will be meeting again. All of us will be in together as believers. We're all going to be able to be together with Christ, with God, for eternity. Now this is a common verse that's used for persons in their end of their journey of life. But I want you to really look at what it really is, and that is a promise from Jesus that he will come back and he will take us home to be with him. Now that takes an act of faith. What is an act of faith? We, we talk about that. An act of faith, a leap of faith. What is that, truly? Well, it's a choice, right? We make a choice. Faith is a choice. So when we take a look at it, we have that choice, and that choice is to follow Jesus. That's what faith is all about. We have made a choice to follow Jesus. How much weight we put on that choice, how much time we invest in that choice to follow Jesus, that tells us how strong our faith is, how much of a commitment we have in our faith. Because we're all on a journey, and life is a journey, beginning at birth, and filled along the way with choices. And the fact is, we're all headed somewhere, but who or what is directing your steps can make that difference between life and death, spiritually. And at times, we're not certain where life's journey will take us, and that brings us to focus. What we are focused on for our lives will affect the choices that we make. And I know I've made that point a couple of times before. I was talking to some people at work. We had a chili cook-off, and I was talking to one of the guys there, and, and uh, he was saying, oh, well, what do you got going this weekend? So I told him, I said, well, you know, Sunday we do the, the 
church service and everything, and I've got a message. You're a preacher? <laughs> well, yeah, how about that? And uh, he says, well, man, he says, I, I couldn't do anything like that. He says, I like to sleep in, I like to go fishing, I like to go hunting, I like to do those kind of things. Well, that's nice. I said, those are some choices. What are you going to do when it comes time at the end of your life? Where, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And he goes, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, life ends. Eternity where? It's a choice. I said, you going to go fishing? Hunting? What are you going to do? And he used to kind of look at me kind of weird, <laughs> and, which is cool, because I am kind of weird. And you are weird, yeah. <laughs> and at that point in time, you know, as, as we all need to do, he needed to ask himself several questions. Am I headed in the right direction? Do I know where I'm going? Have I considered the consequences of my decisions? Have I arrived at my destination or do I need to continue on? What do I do when I get to that fork in the road? Do I settle down or continue? Go left or go right? So if you notice the fork in the road here has got three positions. Now I did a similar message a few years back and I only had two directions you could go. So what about that? Am I headed in the right direction? Now as I was writing this message, I had to ask myself these questions and I had to answer them. And it's called self-examination. But see, as we're going to make choices in our life, these are the prime questions that we need to consider. Remember I said we need to make an informed choice. We have to consider all the facts. Is this action that I'm going to do? Is this choice going to get me where I need to go? Is this choice going to get me where I want to go? <laughs> That's a key one right there. Have I arrived at that destination or do I continue on in this path? What do I do when I get to that fork in the road? Where am I going to go? For those who don't know God, there can be a lot of confusion. There can be frustration. There can be sometimes overwhelming depression because they can't imagine that their future can get any better or be any different. So when we think about those people who, who take that ultimate decision, and unfortunately sometimes this leads to the end of their journey, and they take their own lives because they just can't imagine a future that's different from the situation that they're stuck in, the circumstance that they're stuck in. And so I, I, I can't say it often enough because I know I've said this many, many times, you can't make your choice based on your current circumstance this current situation. Base it upon what God is directing you to do. Not what your circumstance is directing you to do. See, to reach the destination of life's journey, it's going to take time. There's a process that you have to go through. Every choice that you make is a learning process. We make good decisions. We make bad decisions. Hopefully we learn from the bad ones so we don't make them all over again. You know, the illustration I love to make is the one where your parents teach you, tell you not to stick your hand on the hot stove. And so what do you do? You stick your hand on the hot stove and you learn real fast. Listen to your parents, right? So hopefully each choice, if it's a bad choice, <laughs> sticking yourself on a hot stove, uh, you make a, an informed decision. I don't want to do that again because it hurts and it burns. Okay. So every process has its up and downs. It starts and it stops. And the process is not always fun. It's not always fun. The process will usually involve some right and some wrong choices that we make. And the decisions and choices that you make in your journey will determine what your physical and spiritual destiny will look like. And see, those are all facts. 
Those are all truths that you need to stand upon. You need to understand these things. You need to take them to heart. And you need to understand those things before you make your decisions, good or bad. And here's the neat thing that the, that the Word of God tells us. It says that each one of us has a predetermined number of days to get through life's journey. And only God knows those number of days. How you walk through the journey physically and the choices you make during life's journey will determine your physical and your spiritual outcome at the end of your earthly journey. That's another set of truths. That's another set of facts that we have to understand. We have to carry that with us each and every day. How many of us here have made some questionable decisions? Oh yeah. Hey, you two in the back, you didn't raise your hands. Questionable decision. Okay, how many of us here have made downright bad decisions? Or what we thought were good decisions that turned out to be bad decisions? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, every one of us, right? Yep, been there, done that. More than I care to admit. Most of my bad decisions were because I relied on my own understanding instead of God's directions. Can I hear an amen for that one? Can you relate to that? Okay, what does God's word tell us to do? Do not rely on your own understanding, but on the very word of God, right? So if we give God <laughs> the directions, we say, God, we go to God and we say, hey, I got this choice to make. Can you direct me to the right choice? Or do we just go, ah, I got this one, and away we go. And sometimes it works, and sometimes not so much. God's Word gives us the instructions for life and gives us the guidance to make our correct choices. Hints, if you will, to make sure that we make those correct choices. Don't stick your hand on that hot stove. God's Word tells us what we can and can't do, what we should and should not do in the Bible. Let's consider the following scriptures as we go through these things. I'm going to list a few off for you here. Job 14.5 A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits that he cannot exceed. Now to some people, that would kind of, you know, go, Ugh, what do you mean? And then you try and figure out on your own, how many days do you have? How long am I going to live? I mean, mortally, we want to think about those things. Spiritually, if we're in line with God, and if we put our faith and our trust in God, it doesn't matter. Because we know where we're going to go. We know where we're going to end up. God has already gone ahead and done what? Prepared a place for us. And when we end our physical life here, he will come back for us and take him to be with him. We have that promise we can stand on. So does it matter the number of months? or days that have been set for us if we have true faith and trust in God? Absolutely not. But see, we're mortal. We're fallible. We were born into sin. Well, I'll get more than that. So, next one. Psalm 3115. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. So as we think about these verses in here, and we have some more in here, uh, I want to take us back to what our call to worship is. But I'm going to use a different translation. I actually looked at probably 15 different translations until I figured out the ones I wanted to have here today. So our call to worship was from Psalm 139, 14 through 16, and it says, and this one's from the New Living Translation, so it's a little bit different from what you heard earlier. And it says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Now you think about that. You think about a loving God who formed us, who knew us before we even took our very first breath. That's why I wanted to use both of these translations today because it really speaks to what God wants for you and how much God 
cares for you. Remember what I said in the devotion in here? What was it? What am I worth to God? What does this tell you? What does this tell you? Matthew 6, 27 says, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? As a matter of fact, if studies have shown it causes the opposite effect. Those people who worry too much, guess what? It overstresses the systems in the body and causes them to die at an earlier age. So get rid of that worry. Give it to God. Go to God first. Take the worry out of the equation. Jeremiah 29, 11. I love this verse. One of my absolute favorites. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. So if we think about this whole set of verses that we just went through, of these promises of God, that's what these are. These are promises and truths for God, for us to take in and help direct our lives. He wants you to know what you are worth to him. What you are worth to him. More than any gold or silver is what the scriptures tell us. More than any of the treasures that you could bring to yourself on earth. You are worth more than any of those things. See, and if you don't believe in God, these, these verses are simply empty platitudes if you choose not to believe in God. They mean nothing. They're just words on a page. The verses mean nothing if you can't acknowledge God is the creator of the universe. Now we saw through our study of the Truth Project, you in this universe did not happen by chance. We were wonderfully made, wonderfully formed, intricately designed, and brought into a creation that God intricately designed for us to fit into. Think about that. What do you work to God? In my last sermon, I talked about all the things that we were wonderfully created in. Do you remember that? And all the things that are unique to us as a person in God's creation. Those gifts that he gave us. You in this universe did not happen by chance. You were formed and created with God, with intelligent design, with purpose and function. God made you special. Unlike any other creature or form on this earth, you are unique. You have heart, you have soul, and you have a conscience. You are unique to any other creature, any other creation. So let's step back again and consider if God is not real. If God does not have a place in your life, if God is simply not relevant in these times, then you're at an impasse got that fork in the road and you got that middle one right up in the middle. You can't go right, you can't go left. You're at an impasse, right? So what happens then? You're at that proverbial fork in the road and you have a very important choice to make. You can either choose the world and depending on the world to get you through life or choose God and allow God to work in your life. And remember, when you get to that fork in the road, you have a choice to make that will have eternal consequences, good or bad. So, in that ever famous scene with the knight in, in the Indiana Jones movie, he says, choose wisely. Choose wisely. And in there, he saw the consequences right away, right? <laughs> yeah. They chose poorly. He chose, chose wisely. So one thought could you to consider them. These verses that we just read will either haunt you at the end of life's journey, if you think they're untrue, irrelevant, passe, they don't make a difference in your life. What if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? See, once you die, it's too late. It's too late then. Once you're gone, it's all over but the crying, the regret. And oh yeah, don't forget about the heat. So John gives us a glimpse of what it would be like. Revelation 21, 8 says, But for the cowardly and the unbelieving, the abominable, and the murders and immoral persons, the sorcerers, idolaters, and all the liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, they're going to 
they are going to die a physical death. Everyone will die a physical death. Life ends. Eternity where? John is trying to tell us, unless you want to be grouped in with these guys in here, the, un the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, did you hear that? The cowardly, those who won't make a commitment to God, the cowardly, the unbelievers, those who say God isn't relevant for their lives, they're the same as the murderers, the immoral persons. I wouldn't care to spend eternity with the likes of those. I'd rather go to where Jesus has prepared a place for me and go to spend eternity with him. I want to ask another question. Why is it so easy to believe those things off the internet that are not true? And yet we find it so hard to follow the word of God when we, when we see it, hear it, or read it. Why can't we accept the facts of the truth that only God is and always will be in control of your life? And the facts are the facts. So it's time we got to face those facts. You had no say when you started this life's journey. You had no idea what to do about your future in the early days, weeks, or months after you were born. None whatsoever. You have very little control over when life's journey will end. And the reason I say you have very little control is, remember I talked about those people who have no hope, who are so depressed who see no future for them or a difference in their future and they end up taking their lives. They do have some control over when they will die, unfortunately. They didn't know the truth of God. You are loved by God and he knows your name. You can have faith, joy, hope in a future when you choose God. You have been given free choice from the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb. And yes, God had a plan for your life before you were born. Or I love the translation that it, that it used there in John. Before you breathed your very first breath of fresh air. God had a choice. He had a plan for you. He gave us free choice. He says, do you want to accept my truth? Do you want to accept me as your Lord and Savior? And if you do, I am going to prepare a place for you and I'm going to bring you home with me. See, facts are facts. We've got to, we've got to go after those truths. We need to want, understand one prime principle here. But in the meantime, we were born into sin. We were separated from God. And until we accept that gift of salvation from Jesus, we will remain separated from God. We will be lost and wandering. Last week at the men's breakfast that we had, Bill, uh, Carlos' husband, offered up that he read that God is there walking alongside us in our life, journeying through the good and the bad, and he's holding out his hand for us to take. But it's not until we ask God to save us that he takes our hand, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, that once invited into our life, God will actually work in our life. We have to invite him in. And I've said that many, many, many times before. The reason I do is because it's very important for us to understand that principle. We have to ask God into our lives. Yes, he's been there from before we were born. Before we took our first breath, he had a plan for us. But he also said, you have free will choice. When you get to that road, you can either choose me or you can choose these clouds of lightning. Or you can sit there in the middle of the road. And do nothing. Be a coward and not commit it and not decide. He gives us that choice. You see, that free will choice means that He gave us, means we have to choose God in order to enter into a relationship with God. Join together. We have to be in, I love this word, communion with God. Communion with God. That act of salvation is our path to eternal life and no one infant through adulthood can even add an hour into their life under their own power because our lives are in God's hands. 
God knows the number of the days that he has planned for your life. And you may think that you have control of your future, but all of your plans can be cut short by one unforeseen event. Cut short. In Luke, we find an example of a man who planned for his future, but not leave room for God in the process. Remember, a couple, well, for those of you who are here, I stretched the timeline, a piece of tape across all the way over here. And it represented the timeline of our lives. And it, it, it showed how much time we give to God. And after we took all of this stuff that we do all the time, we had this little minuscule dot over here that we give to God. See, this man in Luke, he lived only and considered life's physical journey. And I know so many people, I, I had a partner in business that lived his life that way. And he only considered his physical journey amassing stuff. He was so ingrown, embraced into the world and what the world wants and what the world needs that he lived his life to earn nothing but more fame, more fortune, more money. But see, in the process, then they realize there's nothing more to life than that physical. And he passed away a year ago and he didn't get to take any of it with him nothing it was all for nothing and the problem is he didn't take time for God and he didn't know God before he went see when you die it's too late then it's all over but the crying the grit the gnashing of the teeth as it says Luke 12 18 through 21 says then he said this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I'll store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded of you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be for anyone or for whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. If you don't give the time and efforts to God that you give to your stuff for your life, the stuff that you can't take with you when you die. But guess what? You can take God with you when you die. So where should you be putting your time and energy? In the stuff of the world or in God? and have a future in eternity. Every person is on a physical and spiritual journey, even if they choose not to acknowledge or believe it to be true. Your life can change without warning. A grave illness, a virus pandemic, job loss, a storm, an accident of some time can change your life in an instant. And sometimes you don't die at that point in time. But God makes a change in you that will change the direction of your life. It's happened to me several times. Trust me, I know. <laughs> it changed my path. It changed. I've, I've experienced these life-altering events. Sometimes they come in the form of a wake-up call from God. And your path that you were on is now nothing more than a dead end. A dead end. You need to know that the path you are on that you start off may not be the path that you follow for all of your life. That's true. Your path will change. The path you start on, on may not be the path you want to end up on. And again, we go back to that question, are you where you need to be? Are you where you want to be? Do you want to end up with God? What I want you to think about today may not be what you come to know to be true for tomorrow. For example, studying in one profession yet serving and working in another. That's me. Been there, done that. Uh, the life you live today may not have been your first choice. Life's journey is filled with life choice and your life will look like the choices you make. I have to drag that point home. Depending upon the choice you may experience joy or pain or hopes or disappointments or faith or fear. 
And if you remember back to my previous sermon about wondering, laying in that field and wondering up at the clouds, or going through the store and just kind of wandering around aimlessly. The life you live today will choose, will change for the better or the worse, depending upon the choices you make. Sometimes, when it's necessary, God will nudge you into making a change. Perhaps nudge may not quite describe it. Let's just say he will make it very clear to you, you need to change your life. And then get ready. <laughs> So the important note here is that his plan for you, for life, may not, may not completely align with your personal desires that you have and that you have held on to for years. Ouch. So as I was writing this, I was writing this to myself as much as to you guys. But his plan for your life may not align with your personal desires plans that you've held on to for years and the truth is personal desires and worldly desires can get in the way of God's plan so if so get ready for that nudge because God will nudge you you have to make the choice then at that point in time to listen to God and his call and his nudge I have another question for you today. I'm asking all kinds of questions. Have you acknowledged your wrong choices? Oh yeah. We need to acknowledge the wrong choices and decide to believe, to step out in faith and trust in God. Hand on the stove. Bad choice. Acknowledge the bad choice. Learn for it. Move on. We have to admit and learn from our wrong choices and decide to journey towards the blessings, the promise of God. And see, that's a huge step of faith. That's a choice that we have to make. Because it will determine our lives. It will determine your future. You only have one life journey. So in that life journey I'm telling you today, say yes to Jesus. Do not think you have time to decide another day. We learned what that looks like. Decide today that your life journey will end with enjoying those promises of God. That he tells us in John. That he's going to prepare that place for us. And he will come back and he will take us unto himself. And there we will spend eternity with him. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, gracious Heavenly Father, that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power in your name. Thank you that you hold the keys over death. And that by your might, Jesus was raised from the grave, paving the way for us to have new life with you. If we say, I will. Thank you that you had a plan for us and that you made a way for us to join you in eternity. And we confess today our need for you to refresh us and to make us new again in your faith, in your promises. We ask that you would renew our hearts and our minds and our lives for the days ahead, for the rest of our life journey. We pray for your redemption for us. Keep your words of truth your promises planted firm within us and help us to keep focused on what is right and what is pure and give us the power to be obedient to your word. Lord, we just ask you today that you would be our defense and our guard, keeping our way clear and removing those obstacles that would keep us from you, those things of the world that would come in and distract us from you and your plan for our lives. And we ask that you would cover up those pitfalls. Take the power away from the evil one. And Lord, just reign your power, your Holy Spirit within us. Maybe we make a difference in this world for your glory and for your purposes. Set your way before us. May all your plans for life succeed. May we reflect your peace and your hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence. 
and your healing today. Thanks be to you, God, for your indescribable gift of redemption, of salvation, through your Son, Jesus. To, be, to you be the glory and honor on this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name. events in our lives that define us and that we go through. Certain events invite us both to look forward and to look back. When I think of something like that, I think of um, my communion. And I wear this, this is a ring my, my aunt and uncle had given to me on that day. It allows me, it reminds me to look back at that time that I spent. And it reminds me, and I probably couldn't tell you his name at any point in time, other than when I think about that, Reverend Brockmeyer was uh, the pastor at my church at the time. His cousin was at St. Paul's here at the same time. Uh, and so there's a <laughs> some, this weird connection that I have to Cedar Rapids. <laughs> but it, it, that happens with graduations, it also happens with weddings. And, and as we look forward and we look back, we consider the significance of our Lives and are we where we want to be? But are we where we need to be? As we take communion this morning, it is a wonderful opportunity to ask those questions again. Are we where we want to be? But more importantly, are we where we need to be? On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it, saying, this is my Later in the meal, he took the cup, and he blessed it. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for the sins of many. Take and drink. Scriptures say, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. This is an opportunity to worship. It's an opportunity to reflect. It reminds us of the fact that we are sinners, but that we are redeemed by Jesus' act on the cross. The body of Christ broke. in this communion or Lord's Supper, we look forward to the things that are coming, to where we need to be, to the things that Mark brought to our attention this morning. And certainly if you missed any of them and you didn't write them down, go back on the live feed. All of those are going to be listed out in there for you so that you can uh, get those. But it is a declaration. It's, it's like a big old rubber stamp how confident we are in expressing that Christ is going to return. And will we be ready? Will we be like the bridesmaids who didn't go and get more oil for their lamps? Or will we be like those who did? Father, we thank you that each time that we share in this meal today that we can remember our past, but it allows us to anticipate the future, and it is a, a way for us to experience a renewal, a revival, if you way, will in our own lives. What you did for us is not just some story, Father. It is a fact that your son died on the cross for us, and that it has a, an immeasurable, 
impact on our lives. Until Jesus returns, Father, we have a living hope through you, our living Lord. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians about Jesus' second coming and observed that this hope will encourage us and build us up, Father. We thank you for that message. In Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. What a powerful message we had this morning. Thank you, Mark. That was awesome. And Terry, thank you very much. And so, um, as we invite Jesus into our lives this morning, I have that in the end of my prayer this morning for those who choose to. And um, so, Terry's given me a few um, people to pray for. Is there anyone else that would ask for prayer this morning? Was it not on? <laughs> that better? Yeah, no. A little closer? Better. Okay. <laughs> All right, then, um, Father God, I just bring the Holy Spirit into this place, into my mind and my words, that I may speak your word this morning as you have given it to me. And in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And Father God, we praise you and thank you this morning for sending us Jesus and the Holy Spirit to, get, to teach us and to guide us through this life. For you say in Psalms 37, 23 and 24, If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. You are God and there is no other. The way to eternal life is with your son Jesus Christ. Narrow is the road to righteousness, but wide is the path to destruction. Let us choose this day to follow you the rest of our lives so that we may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Father God, I lift up these people, Lord. I lift up Becky is asking for prayer for breathing, prayers for Terry's dad for swelling and discomfort in his legs, that he would be healed. And Diane is having carpal tunnel surgery on her right hand on February 24th, and we ask for your guidance and healing for the doctors, Lord Jesus, and healing for her hand. We ask, we lift up Chris Kramer, my boss, who had surgery on her arm last Thursday. Deb Borum, who is a working friend of mine who fell and tore her knee. Steve, my husband, who is having complete shoulder replacement mm -hmm. March 7th. Larry, his brother, who is having radiation treatments for cancer. Mark, for healing for his lungs. And Sarah Sinclair, who is desperately needing your help and divine intervention today, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for their lives, and we ask that you give them strength, comfort, and healing. Let the blood of Jesus wash over them and bring them peace that only you can give during the trials each one are facing. Let your will be done in their lives. Help them to know they do not walk alone. You are with us, Father God. You will never leave us or forsake us. In their time of desperation, help them to hear your still, small voice calling through the darkest night that you are there with them, guiding them through this trial and sustaining them, holding on to them, Lord Jesus. You will never leave them. Thank you, Jesus, for your promises and your faithfulness to us. We give you all the glory for their healing. So, Jesus, you have given each of us a choice in this life, to choose to follow you or not. I pray for those here and online who want to accept you into their lives, for we do not know what tomorrow brings. Let us be sure this day by accepting to follow you. So pray with me. Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. I believe you walked among us. You shed your blood on the cross to save us from our sins, and you rose three days later. You are the Son of God. Right now, this day, I receive total forgiveness of my sins. I receive restoration. I leave grief behind, sorrow behind, the pain behind, the shame behind. And I receive a brand new life in Jesus Christ. I know the enemy will fight me, 
But Lord God, I receive your purity, your integrity, your tranquility, your peace, your sanity, your joy, your abundant life, your amazing grace. Lord, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Thank you, Denise. You, you were truly a prayer warrior. But what is really amazing, if you listen to the entirety of what she was reading and praying, that she wrote out ahead of time in this service, not knowing what I was going to preach on today at all. If you noticed, it matched exactly. If you ever have a doubt if God is working in our lives, if God is present with us here today and working with them, Great Street Church, you have your answer right there in writing. Because that exact thing of, of going down the narrow path or going yeah. to the highway to hell, yeah. which is paved and smooth and easy to take. Mm -hmm. God is working. God gave her that message Very to give smart. to you without knowing what I was going to say today. Yes. Thanks be to God. He is alive and working in our lives today. This brings us to the end of our online portion of our service today. We have a link that is up in our um, feed today, so you can check out the videos online. Please listen to those because they're every bit as much of the message today, the message in music as it was in word and spoken to you today. Let us go to God. God, today, I, before we go out into the world again, let us hold firm to your promises. Let us hold firm to your truths that you are in control of our lives, that you have a plan for our lives. Lord, that you are alive and working in our lives today. You have affirmed that with us today by the prayers of the prayer warrior that we just heard. So gracious Lord God, we come before you today. We confess that we are in sinners, that we are in need of your grace and mercy. We repent of our sins today and we pray for forgiveness. We pray that by the power and the love and the blood of Jesus, that we can be redeemed. We can be made whole with you again, that we can be joined in communion with you again. Lord Jesus, we ask for you to come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. We thank you for your blessed assurance that we will be with you in heaven and that your spirit gives us the strength, the hope, and the love to be your disciples in this lost world. Lord, we lift up our lives, our church, our city, our state, and our nation to you. We pray that you would do a mighty act of healing in us and in the world today and that your your word and your name would be boldly proclaimed and that your works would be done embolden us today to step up and step out to bring home the loss and lead us to growth in your spirit and keep us unto you in everything we say and everything that we do in your precious and holy name we pray today amen